We've been following the life of an American couple making an impact on the world simply by living in it. As a nation, we drive around in 200 million cars and consume raw materials, fuels, and minerals. We are consuming resources faster than the Earth can replace them. In fact, if everyone in the world lived like we Americans do, we'd need at least four planets to meet our demand for natural resources and absorb our waste and pollution. As technology evolves at an ever-accelerating pace, so does our need to find the materials to keep up with it. This puts pressure on the world's resources. If everyone else used lead at the rate we do, then the 42-year supply that we have left would be cut to just four years. The lifespan of tin reserves, vital in the manufacture of a wide range of everyday goods, would be cut from 40 years to eight and a half. Platinum, used in the making of scientific equipment, is set to run out in 360 years. But if the rest of the world used it as much as we do, then it would all be gone in 21 years. The same is true for many other precious materials. Uranium, used for weapons and also as a power source, would all be gone in just nine and a half years. But it's not just precious minerals that are being used. Most of our public buildings and the infrastructure that connects them depend on vast quantities of more basic materials. Iron and steel, sand and gravel, cement and stone. Our cities and lives would be nothing without them. If you do the calculations and work out how many buildings we use in our lives, it turns out that each of us uses 1.1 million pounds of these materials in our lifetime. That's 551,000 tons, or the equivalent weight of six Washington monuments. Then there's power. To produce electricity, we burn a lot of coal. While we may have huge coal reserves, over a lifetime, each of us will require 285 tons of it for our power needs, as much coal as in this coal yard. Many gadgets we've come to depend upon have an impact on the world's resources, none more so than the cell phone. For all its sophistication, the cell phone has gone from costly miracle device to disposable plaything. One hundred fifty-six million Americans use a cell phone, including nearly fifty percent of American teenagers. Right now, across the globe, one point two billion cell phones are in use. And because new models are always coming out, people throw out 125 million old cell phones each year. Each handset consists of 40% metal, 40% plastics, and 20% ceramics and trace elements. A cell phone is made up of many components, its brain is a tiny circuit board made from mined raw materials including copper, gold, lead, nickel, zinc, beryllium, and a little known naturally occurring mineral called coltan. Coltan, the key ingredient, is made up of columbian and tantalite. Tantalite is a rare, hard, dense metal, very resistant to high temperatures and corrosion, an excellent heat and electrical conductor. It's what's enabled our cell phones to become so tiny. But finding these unique materials is an enormous challenge. Our love affair with the cell phone has an impact halfway around the world. 80% of the world's coltan is mined in the rainforests of the Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa. 
This territory was the home of gorillas and okapis, elephants and monkeys. But mining disrupts their habitats as well as attracting poachers and illegal mine operators. The mining of coltan has had human costs as well, as indigenous tribes have been dispossessed and the influx of wealth has helped to fund guerrilla warfare in the region. Even though we may be many miles away from where our cell phones originate, we can each help to lessen the impact. So if everyone recycled their cell phones instead of tossing them, we could reuse precious metals and save resources, wildlife, and even human lives. Our collective human footprints are not only reducing the unspoiled wilderness, they are also changing the environment around our hometowns. As our children quickly grow up and become adults, they also want to set up home. The demand for construction and services increases, cutting into the countryside. More than one million acres of productive farmland and open space gets bulldozed to make way for sprawling development every year in this country. That's two acres of open land, the area behind me, disappearing every minute, every day. Just look at our towns and cities. It's not just the new homes, it's all the parking, the gas stations, the shopping malls, and the roads connecting them all. As growth spreads, native plants and animals find their habitat shrinking. And surprisingly, as many as 13% of threatened species in the U.S. live alongside us in metro and suburban areas. And at the current growth rate by the year 2025, our expanding towns will turn a natural habitat the size of West Virginia into suburbia, forcing wildlife to move elsewhere or driving them into extinction. But the ultimate thing is that over a lifetime, we'll lose more than 93 million acres. That's an area the size of the state of Montana. Today, there are more than 550 animals listed as endangered or threatened in the United States because of our expanding footprint. They range from the mosquito-eating gray bat to the grizzly bear. Each year, development drains 110,000 acres of wetlands, a unique ecosystem home to many species under threat. And our ever-increasing demand for water also alters our landscape. The once mighty Colorado River now barely trickles into the sea. What does it mean if we lose a gray bat or a fish or a bear? Most of us will never see these creatures anyway. With so much to worry about in our own lives, why should we be concerned? Well, because they're important. Like us, they all have a role to play in the overall balance of things. The problem is we're only just starting to figure out what that role is. Take the gray bat, for example. It lives in riverside caves in the summer, and it eats up to a 1,000 mosquitoes an hour every night. A thousand mosquitoes that would otherwise breed more mosquitoes. That little bat leaves a footprint, just like us. As we move forward step by step, it's easy to overlook the magnitude of our actions. But when we look back over our entire lives, we will have a surprising perspective of our human footprint. The potatoes are going to go to a pig farm, as we did with the bananas. Pig, 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 pig. We've given some clothes already to uh, some of the shelters as well as Salvation Army. Um, the aluminum cans are going back for recycle. The ducks are going back to Arizona where they came from. The bread that we will uh, utilize in the shop, we hope to give that away to uh, shelters. The newspapers are going back to a recycling plant tomorrow. There are wine bottles which will go for recycle. And same with the plastics. They get melted down and used in certain products such as park benches. So it's all recyclable. And then the final, final reveal is all of those things put together. So your entire life's consumption laid out in front of a house.